Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're gonna look at how we set up a main menu and how we set up a game over screen. So let's just get right into it. First of all, let's start by making a new scene for our main menu. And I'm gonna call this main menu. And let's open the scene. So here we have an empty scene. In order to be able to see the best how it looks, let's take both our game view and the scene view to be visible. Now let's make a new text mesh pro and we're just gonna import TMP essentials. The reason why I use text mesh pro and not the normal text is that you can just do much more with text mesh pro. So now let's zoom out so we can see the entire canvas, like so. Let's put this text up here and let's make this, let's make this auto sizing. Let's make it able to be much bigger. And let's just say this is our game name. And I'm gonna make sure to center the text as well. And let's make it bold to make it look a little better. So let's also just make go to the main camera and instead of making it stuff skybox, I want a solid color. I just think this can look much better, much nicer if we don't have a background image. I'm just gonna set some sort of generic color back here. All right, there we go. Now let's get started. Let's first start by adding a UI button that is also Text Mesh Pro. And let's call this start. Now you can place and scale the button however you want. So I'm just gonna set up this with a start and a exit game button. And remember, remember, if you open up the button and you go into the text here, you can just set the auto sizing on. Now, I've just set it up how I like it. Remember under the buttons, there's this button element. You don't actually change the color of the button up here. You do it down here by the normal color. And then you can also do a highlighted color and a pressed color. So you can change how it looks, whether you hover over it, whether you have it clicked. Right, now let's get into the scripting part. So let's go to our scripts folder and make a new script that we're just gonna call menu controller. Now let's attach this menu controller to the canvas and let's open it up. So up here in the top of the script, we wanna make sure that we're using Unity Engine to scene management. We wanna be using TM Pro, cause we chose to use Text Mesh Pro. And we wanna be using Unity Engine.UI. This means we can work with the buttons, we can change scenes, and we can work with Text Mesh Pro. So first of all, let's make a function on how we close the game with the quit button. So first of all, we make a public void, which we're just gonna call close game. And in this close game, we're just gonna do application.quit. Now that's basically all that. Now the way that we attach this is we go into the quit button and you can see down here under the button element, you can see the unclick function. We're gonna add a new one. We're gonna drag in the canvas object cause that holds our script. And we're gonna go to the menu controller and choose the close game function. And now when you press the close game button, nothing's gonna happen because we're in the inspector. But if you do build the game, this will close the game. Now in the script up here at the top, we wanna be able to reference the scene that we wanna load. But the way that you do this in Unity is you actually do it through a string, which means you have to write the name of the scene, the exact name. So we're gonna make a public string scene name. And we're gonna be able to define this in the inspector. So now we also want a public void, which we're gonna call load scene. And this load scene function will load a new scene with which has this scene name. So we're gonna do scene manager dot load scene. And then here we have to type in the scene name. And you can choose how you wanna load in the scene if that's needed. So you can do load scene mode. Uh, and then you can choose whether you want this to be additive or single. So Unity actually has the option to load up a scene on top of another scene. This is what additives means. In our case, we just wanna use single. And now if we go back out to the Unity editor and we choose our start button, and go down, make a new on-click function, drag in the canvas like we did last time. And, and then under the menu controller, we're gonna do load scene. And now, we it doesn't exactly work yet. So first of all, we need to write the name of the scene that we wanna load. So in my case, it's just the sample scene. So I'm gonna copy the name of that, go to the canvas and paste that in here. Now, another thing that's really important is any scene that you want to load in Unity, you need to go to build settings and make sure that the scene is in here in the build so we can drag in the main menu, and we can drag, drag in the sample scene to make sure that we have both our scenes here so we can reference them. So now this reference should work. So if we play the game and we press start game, it'll load my other scene. Now, one thing that's important to note is in the Unity editor, for some reason, when you load a scene like this, it will not load the lights. But when you do build the game, it does work correctly. It just doesn't bake the light when you load a scene like this. So this is a very basic way to make a very basic main menu. If you want me to go more in depth with the main menu, please let me know. But let's move on to the game over screen. So now I'm in my very simple game here, which I used for 
uh, previous tutorial. If I go into the ball, I do have this ball controller script, which is what I'm going to be using. So in the ball controller script, I have just made a void that's called player die. And this runs if we go below the position, the Y position of 0.5 or negative 0.5, which means if we fall off the platform, you'll right now just respawn me back here. But this is why I wanted to run a game over screen. So now in Unity, let's start designing the game over screen. So if we go to UI and then I actually prefer making a new panel. Now let's zoom all the way out here again so we can see the entire canvas. Now this panel can actually act like a background and since I don't want the player to be able to see anything. I just want the background to go to black and I want some text in here that says game over and you can go back to the menu. So let's add a new text mesh pro and just call this game over text. And on this text, I'm just going to write game over with an exclamation mark and set it up just like we did in the main menu. Here we go. Now I've just set up the game over text and a very basic button like we just did before. Now, you remember the main the menu controller script that we used, we can actually use this on the canvas again because we only used the scene name input here. So if we go back, we can just copy the name of our main menu, go to the canvas and paste it in here. And now we can go to the main menu button and just like we did before, add a new on click action, drag in the canvas, go to the main menu and go click load scene. And now the last thing that is that needs to be done is to make sure that this panel is being disabled or enabled, I mean, when we die. So let's go into the script. So first of all, we want to be making a new reference to the panel. So I'm going to make a public game object that I'm just going to call game over panel like so. And now down here under the player die function, instead of doing this, I'd much rather do game over panel dot set active to true. And now let's go back out to unity. And let's make sure to go into the ball and set this game over panel object in here. And now let's disable the panel from here. And let's try and play the game. I'm going to roll off the edge. And there you go. That's the main menu. Now if I click on the main menu button, you can see that we go back to the main menu here. And we're back here. I can press start again and I can play again. I can go off the edge and the main menu is back. Now, the last thing I want to say is that we actually have a new Discord server. The link will be in the description and in the pinned comment as well. Uh, we're actually starting to see quite a lot of activity there. People are super nice helping each other. If you also need help or want to help other people with Unity, feel free to join. That would be absolutely awesome to see you around there. And feel free to just ping me and say hello. Now, I really hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. I know it's pretty short and not very in-depth. If there's something you want to know more in-depth, absolutely just let me know. I can make way more advanced menus if that's needed, but I think this is a very good starting point for you to start understanding how to work with user interfaces in Unity. Now, a like is much appreciated, a subscription is much appreciated, and have a wonderful day.